Good morning. I'd like to thank uh, the organizer for the opportunity to be here today with you. I'm Paolo Milani and I'm consultant at the Amyloidosis Research and Treatment Center of Pavia, Italy. And I'm going to talk with you about myeloma-related diseases. So, thank you again. Those are my main uh, disclosure. So, we have to talk about myeloma-related diseases, and so I would like to start with the definition of the so-called monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance. This is an important emerging field in uh, the um, plasma cell dyscrasia field, in the plasma cell disc amongst the plasma cell dyscrasia experts and so also patients. Those conditions are characterized by the fact that they are small, dangerous, secreting B cell clone, as proposed by my mentor, Professor Merlini, late in 2006, plus related symptoms. Three are the main characteristics the presence of monoclonal gammopathy. The presence of no overt associated uh, cancers, so lympho or plasma cell proliferation, and associated symptoms. And we will look into that closely. In the last few years, many papers reported, first of all, the importance of the so called monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance, the so called MGRS. And uh, then the, was founded the International Kidney and Monoclonal Gammopathy Research Group that involves uh, clinicians, but also pathologists, nephrologists, hematologists, and uh, all the experts involved in the diagnosis and treatment in those myeloma-related disorders. And Professor Ferman, a few years ago, defined the monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance, so the definition of those different conditions. The first definition is related to the presence of uh, renal involvement only, so those conditions that are mainly monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance, those with renal but also systemic involvement, so the presence of also other organs involved, and those with usually without uh, renal involvement. So those conditions with only extra renal manifestation. We will look through more, most of those uh, conditions that are all myeloma related disorders. And Dr. Angela Dispensieri, my mentor when I was in US a few years ago, uh, had an extraordinary lecture at the last American Society of Hematology meeting in 2020. She described the monoclonal gammopathies of clinical significance, and we are going to talk of most of those conditions. We, I will not focus on the light chain AL amyloidosis in my presentation because Professor Minima uh, already gave us extraordinary lecture. And so I would like to focus about the kidney-related disease, so the so-called monoclonal gammopathy of renal significant disease, the MGRS. Those situations have uh, a plasma cell disorder or a B-cell disorder that does not meet the current criteria for immediate treatment. So in all those situations, patients will not require immediate chemotherapy. But this clone produces a nephrotoxic light chain, a nephrotoxic monoclonal immunoglobulin that could create a direct damage to the kidney or other organs. Those conditions are characterized by the presence of uh, uh, mm, non response to immunosuppressive regimens or other regimens that are usually used for uh, other glomerulopathies. All the affected patients have a very high rate of recurrence after kidney transplant. 
obviously, in those cases in which the disease is not recognized and the patient received immediate transplant without an effective chemotherapy. And lastly, affected patients are at risk for progression to the corresponding hematological cancer. So all of them needs to be tested and followed by hematologists in order to exclude the presence of a progression to the corresponding hematological diseases. This is the histological classification proposed by the EKMG group based on the fact that immunogonal immunoglobulins are deposited in different homes, in organized deposits or non-organized deposits. And here we have the main clinical uh, picture of those conditions. As mentioned, I will not focus on AL amyloidosis, that is probably one of the most important MGRS, in, uh, characterized with the so-called organized deposits. The other forms are much rarer and are the monoclonal immunogroptoid glomerulopathy and the type 1 creal globulinemic glomerulopathy, characterized by different behavior of proteinuria, nephrotic syndrome in a different percentage, and extremely rare extrarenal manifestation. For those MGRS with non-organized deposits, the most important are the so-called MIDD, monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition diseases. The most important of this group is the light chain deposition disease. And then we have heavy chain or light and heavy chain deposition disease. This condition, this condition is characterized by the presence of a proteinuria that is less abundant compared to light chain AL amyloidosis, a nephrotic syndrome that is less important, and the presence of hypertension and hematuria in most of the patients. Extrarenal manifestations are rare, but really important to be um, defined, and are mostly related to hepatic and cardiac manifestation. MGRS represent the majority of patients, approximately 80% of patients have a monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance, so known myeloma clone, but 40, almost 30% of patients could have a myeloma. Then we have also rare condition, the PGNMID, with an heavier proteinuria compared to LCDD and known extrarenal manifestation. And also the C3 glomerulopathy that, only, uh, that uh, also have no extra renal diseases. Looking particularly at the LCDD, I had the pleasure to guide an international effort in order to collect data about patients with LCDD all around the globe. At ASH last year, I presented a poster with uh, the first uh, data analysis of 359 patients with light chain deposition disease. This is the larger series reported so far. The main characteristics are that patients have a low plasma cell burden, a median of uh, plasma cell infiltration of 10%. And in most of the cases, the patient had already had diagnosis and advanced renal disease. The most frequent treatment type is bortezomib based in approximately 50% of patients. The overall survival of this patient is quite good, and uh, the, it is important to note that predicting factors on survival are the presence of end stage renal diseases and the presence of an heavy, uh, high uh, plasma cell burden at diagnosis. Most important is the renal survival, so the time to dialysis in those patients. And the most important predictors and independent predictors of renal survival are the presence of a heavy proteinuria in the nephrotic range and an advanced renal disease at diagnosis is not. So, in addition, 
we also found that obtaining a complete remission or a very good partial remission that our goal of treatment that represent the profound reduction of free light chain of monoclonal component is associated with a significantly better overall survival in our patient score compared to obtain only a mild reduction or a non-response to therapy. Renal survival is also associated with obtaining a complete remission or a very good partial remission. So the conclusion of this first analysis was that the degree of proteinuria and bone marrow plasma cell infiltration predict renal and overall survival. And that obtaining a profound reduction of the monotoxic immunoglobulin defined by the different the complete remission or very good partial response after treatment pre could predict renal and organ survival. Now I'm going to have the final results, final analysis of more than 460 patients, and I hope to do this analysis soon. Moving to other myeloma-related diseases, we have to look at those uh, related to peripheral neuropathy, peripheral nervous system involvement. One of the most important is the so-called POM syndrome characterized by the presence of polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrinopathy, monoclonal component, and skin changes. Those are the mandatory criteria defined every year by Dr. Dispensieri. A combination of those criteria allow you to give the final diagnosis. Neuropathy is characterized by the subacute distal symmetric sensory motor neuropathy. Sensory syndrome usually precede motor symptoms, and many patients quickly, unfortunately, become wheelchair or bedbound dependent. So it is important to rapidly recognize this disease. Another important issue is the presence of osteosclerotic bone lesions. So a skeletal survey is mandatory. And we have several minor criteria, as mentioned, the organomegaly, the presence of endocrinopathy, and the presence of thrombocytosis that are also important minor criteria that have to be combined with the mandatory and major criterion. And we could have specific skin changes related to this condition. This is a picture of one of our recent patients diagnosed with Perm syndrome here in Padilla. So this condition is really difficult to identify, but we could use this important criteria in order to get the final diagnosis and specific therapy. Moving to other diseases are those related to the skin. These are rarer conditions. Sclero-mixedema is important, and four, four criteria are mandatory. Presence of papular cutaneous eruptions, specific histological manifestation, the presence of monoclonal gammopathy, obviously, and the absence of thyroid dysfunction. Another important but rare condition is the Schnitzler's syndrome, characterized by the presence of urticaria rash in the IgM monoclonal component, with other two signs that mostly are related to fever and increase the C-reactive protein. Another important skin-related disorder is the Tempe syndrome, defined by the presence of telangiectasia, elevated erythropoietin, monoclonal gammopathy, and peripheral nephritic fluid collection. A rare condition is acquired cutis laxa, characterized by loose, redundant, hypoelastic skin, and other manifestation. Obviously, for those conditions, a specific dermatologic consultation is mandatory, and also specific histological evaluation. For all the monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance, early diagnosis 
has a key role. So a careful clinical workup at the baseline evaluation of all those patients with the monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance is really important. We have to look at renal and extra renal manifestations. We have to search for proteinuria in all our patients with MGAS. We have to check for renal function and serum cardiac biomarkers that are important in order to exclude cardiac diseases, but also cardiac amyloidosis and uh, cardiac uh, disease related to LCDD, for example. Cardiac imaging will be required in suspected cases. Laboratory is important. We have obviously to identify our monoclonal component with serum and urine immunofixation and free light chain measurement that are mandatory. If it's not detected monoclonal protein, but we may now use more sensitive technique, mass spectrometry of serum and urine. We hope to have this technique here in Pavia soon, and this already used in some centers around the globe. Or we might test for bone marrow evaluation with next generation flow or next generation sequencing. All those patients with a uh, uh, disease or really suspect of the disease must be tested with CT or PET CT scan in order to search for single plasmocytoma or osteosclerotic syndrome, as mentioned. Treatment. The treatment of MGCS is the treatment of renal and extrarenal manifestation, but those treatment is related to the treatment of the clone. So we have to try to eradicate the non-malignant clone that produces toxic light chains. If the clone is plasmocytic, we have to move with bortezomib-based regimen, autologous tensin transfer, obviously only in those eligible, and probably anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies will play a role also in those rare conditions. In the presence of a lymphoplasmocytic or lymphoplasmoblast disease, we need specific therapy. And also in this setting, we will see the role of newer agent. So we have a really emerging option, um, new emerging options for the treatment of the underlying clone in order to reduce the renal and extrarenal manifestation. The primary objective is to preserve the organ dysfunction. And we saw in light chain amyloidosis and now also in LCDD that the complete elimination of the toxic monoclonal protein, the monoclonal immunoglobulins, is the goal of treatment. Because if you reach a profound reduction of the toxic light chain, this will be associated with an improvement in terms of survival, but also an improvement in terms of the organ dysfunction. This is the goal for amyloidosis, but also for those conditions. And uh, probably in the upcoming months, we will see studies about the role of the minimal residual disease evaluation also in this rarer condition. With that, I'd like to invite all of you to the International Kidney Monoclonal Gammopathy Research Group Workshop that will be held in Milano next year. It was planned for 2021, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we decided to move to next year and hopefully it will be a live meeting. And again, I'd like to thank all my mentors and all my colleagues from the Pavia unit. Thank you so much for your attention. I will be happy to take all your questions.